This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. So you may remember a few weeks ago we had that lawyer kitten Zoom appearance. Well, we had something maybe not as funny, but something just as interesting happen. Apparently a California doctor appeared for his traffic hearing while in surgery, while, while he was the surgeon in the operating room. The story here is presented by the Sacramento Bee, and I certainly don't want to commit any copyright infringement, but this video belongs to the court, so I don't think I have any uh, fair use issues. I think this video is going to be public domain because the, the video made by the government will be public domain. I think it has the Sacramento Bee's, like, little icon in there, but that's not what I would consider to be enough for copyright protection. So let's look at this and react to it. I'm hearing some beeping in the background. Hello? Oh, Mr. Green? Yes. Hi. Are you uh, available for trial? It, it kind of looks like you're in an operating room right now. <laughs> I am, sir. I'm in an operating room. Yes, I'm available for trial. Go right ahead. Okay. Let me just briefly advise you that the proceedings right now, they are being live streamed on YouTube. That's because traffic trials are required by law to be open to the public. Since we're limiting physical access to the courtroom right now, that's how we're making them open to the public. Okay. Okay. If I could get you to raise your right hand for me, please. Officer Monroe was previously sworn in, so she won't be taking the oath right now, but I'll swear you in. Do you solemnly state under penalty of perjury that the testimony you provide today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. So uh, can everybody hear me? Officer, yes, sir. Officer Monroe, Mr. Green, Elizabeth yes, Ramirez, uh, is she part of this case? Yes. Oh, people are just coming in. What I'm looking at is Scott Douglas Green's case, case number 20, TRO 95795. I believe Officer Monroe is present on this case as well. So unless I'm mistaken, I'm seeing a defendant that's in the middle of an operating room appearing to be actively engaged in providing services to a patient. Is that correct, Mr. Green? Yes, sir. Or what I sh should I say, Dr. Green, but I don't know okay. that. Okay, that's so, okay. Um, I do not feel comfortable uh, for the welfare of a patient if you're in the process of operating that I would put on a trial, notwithstanding the fact that the officer's here today. What's, sir, I, have uh, another, I have another surgeon right here who's doing the surgery with me, so I can stand here and allow them to do the surgery also. Not at all. I'm, I, I don't think so. I don't think that's appropriate. I think we're going to have, I'm going to come up with a different date when you're not actively involved or participating in attending to the needs of a patient. Um, let me see if I can get a different date here. I apologize, Your Honor, to the court. Sometimes and surgery doesn't always go as... The court, as you know, as it happens. Go. We want to keep people healthy. We want to keep them alive. That's that's important. I'm concerned about the welfare the of a Thursday. patient based on what right. I'm seeing. Mr. Green or Dr. Yes, Green, 3 o'clock p.m., Department 87, okay. March 4th. Is that going to fit your calendar, we hope? Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, you're both free to go now. So yeah, that happened. Um, the, uh, Mr. or Doc, I guess it's Dr. Green. Uh, I, I think everyone in the courtroom, everyone in the Zoom courtroom handled it professionally. I think it was quite unprofessional for a doctor to appear in court from an operating room. Um, when you appear in court, even via Zoom, you should be appearing in court basically the way that you would appear in court if it was real court, if it was if it was live in person court. And and Judge Roy Ferguson from the Lawyer Cat, uh, he he weighs in on this as well. He says you are not available for a hearing if you are driving, laying in bed, or can't believe I have to say this, operating on a patient. Easy rule: if you can't do it in person, you can't do it in a virtual hearing either. So it's ridiculous that we have to say this in 2021 to it. I mean, the doctor, it, OK, it would be one thing if it was a young person who wasn't familiar with judicial 
decorum. But Dr. Green, just looking at his demeanor and the, you know, the, the, the quality of the skin that we can see because, you know, he's covered up and everything. Uh, he, he seems like he's maybe not a spring chicken, so he should know not to, uh, at best be inappropriate in court and at worst, maybe be disrespecting the court. Is it, is it a situation where his surgery simply ran over time and instead of having what he obviously has an assistant of some kind, couldn't the assistant have just called the court and said, I'm sorry, the doctor's in surgery. He didn't anticipate the surgery would run this long. It was unexpected. We don't mean to disrespect the court. Could you please give us some sort of continuance? Rather, he just starts the video with the audio playing I don't even, I don't know if HIPAA applies because I don't I don't see any patient information but you're certainly in the surgical theater so I'm not sure if that's some sort of a violation of something but at the at the worst it's completely disrespectful to the court because it's sending the message that court wasn't important enough to handle in an appropriate fashion that we think so little of the court that we're just going to tr treat it like a quick phone call with 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 your relative, your spouse, or your kid, or or your friend, or something like, "Hey, everybody, uh, are we done with court? Okay, great. I can get back to my real life now. See ya." No, I, I, that's not really that's not really the way that court should be handled. It has to be treated with some level of respect certainly here i am as representing myself as an attorney and i don't get dressed up in a suit for my my youtube show and things i like to do the sort of anti-lawyer persona um but not out of disrespect and i try to make that really clear that it's not the outfit however at the same time that sort of anti-lawyer character or persona doesn't apply in court. When I go to court, I'm not some dramatic YouTuber who's trying to stir the pot. I am subservient to the court. I am an officer of the court. I dress nicely. I, I dress appropriately. I treat everyone with respect. The, the security people at the door, the court's staff, the clerk of the court system that takes my documents, everyone gets treated with the utmost respect as if they were the judge and everyone you know as if everyone was was you know deserved the same respect as the judge because they do everyone deserves your respect and if maybe if they do something to disrespect you maybe you have some reason to feel like you've been disrespected but you still have every reason to respect them back and, and be the better person um, here a doctor who obviously wouldn't accept a level of disrespect being visited upon him um, is doing that right back to the court. Maybe he doesn't think his traffic court appearance is very important, but it should still be treated with the respect due to a court and to the officer. And kudos to the judge who doesn't get mad and just handles it as if maybe the judge maybe maybe the judge doesn't know everything about the situation doesn't know if mr dr green is intentionally disrespecting the court if it's just an accident or if if really the surgery did run overtime and the uh the party didn't understand how to handle that and the the cop the the officer in the bottom uh, really i mean we didn't even really get any super revealing facial expressions there wasn't like a rolling of the eyes or a nodding of the head or a shaking no it, it was just she just sat there okay this is happening i've seen i've seen things happen before she she may have been the one who has seen the most so yeah that happened um and I do, I do have it on good information from, I think, the Sacramento Bee here, who at the bottom says, the Medical Board of California in a statement Friday said it would look into the incident, saying, quote, it expects physicians to follow the standard of care when treating their patients. So there will be some kind of investigation. And I mean, I, I hope that this isn't any tremendous mark on Dr. Green's career, but it should still not not be done this way. And that was a 
that's a pretty dumb thing to do, to show up to court. We've had other situations this year, thanks to COVID, where attorneys have showed up to court as the attorney and next sitting outside their house next to their pool. Uh, we've had attorneys who have appeared shirtless. Um, we've had attorneys who appeared in bed. I think I, I think I did one of those videos where I, where I started the video in bed in my bathrobe um, and tried to make like a comedic cold open out of it. Um, and then of course we had the, the lawyer cat, which is my absolute favorite. I'm not a cat. Uh, uh, cor cor correction on that one. We thought that it was a Snapchat f uh, filter, a Snap camera filter, but it actually may have been something that was included with, with Dell like many years ago, like 2006, something like that. But still, uh, those when it happens accidentally, everyone should be patient with be patient with the situation. When it happens out of ignorance, someone should be maybe slapped on the wrist. When it happens intentionally, if it turns out that Mr. Slash Dr. Green was intentionally disrespecting the court, um, you know, I don't, I don't care about showing up on time or I don't care about showing up in the correct dress or from the correct forum. I'm speaking generally about things. Um, if, if it turns out that he was intentionally not caring about his court case, uh, judges don't like that. And if you get the wrong judge who wants to do something about it, they can basically hold you in contempt of court. But it didn't seem like Dr. Green was acting out of some kind of contempt. Um, may have quickly realized that he was acting inappropriately and he apologized to the court. So if you find yourself in a situation where you can't make your court appearance and if you turn on your Zoom camera or you join the hearing via Zoom, there's going to be inappropriate background noise, there's going to be inappropriate video, um, what you do instead is you profusely apologize to the court, explain yourself, and ask the judge for a continuance. If you uh, if you know about this situation ahead of time, then you call the court, you call chambers, you call the court's clerk, and you say, you know, I've got this situation, I need to ask for what's basically an emergency continuance. Most judges will understand. Now, that's teetering on the edge of legal advice, so, you know, I, you know, it's not individualized legal advice, but it is pretty good general legal advice that if you're going to miss your court hearing, you call ahead of time and let someone know and then give the judge a chance to say, sorry, you can't miss this court hearing. And then you have to figure out what to do. I've had that happen as well. Dr. Green, at the very least, could have told his boss to find other surgeons for that day. No. Yes, that's exactly what what could have happened. Um, it didn't appear like Dr. Green was the only doctor available for an emergency surgery. If it was scheduled, and I'm guessing that there's no such thing as emergency plastic surgery, maybe maybe there is for, for, for certain kinds of accidents and things like that, but I'm going to guess that most types of plastic surgery can be scheduled ahead of time. And so if you find your traffic hearing overlapping with your plastic surgery, reschedule one of them. And if the court won't reschedule it, then you reschedule the surgery. That's just how it works. You call the client up and you say, I'm sorry, I have a court hearing that day. I can't get out of it. The judge won't let me out of it. You blame the judge if the judge is the one who, who, who won't let you out of it. And then move the, move this, the, the surgery. You know, if the client doesn't understand that's a tough situation. You know, what if you what if you lose a few thousand dollars of income because a client doesn't understand or, or won't accommodate your needs because of a court hearing? Well, that's a tough situation. Maybe you end up having to pay the traffic ticket or, or something. And I, you know, depending on the traffic ticket, you might not be able to. What if what if it was a what if it was an unfair, reckless driving charge or something like that? Um, you know, you'd want to contest that if it was if it was not something that you're guilty of. And then sometimes you want to contest it, even if it is something you're guilty of. Uh, not to get too much on a rant, but uh, what I used to do in traffic court, we'd have people who were charged with a certain level of offense, and then I would just go and ask. 
the you know officer will you take this 25 over down to a 10 over or 15 over and most of the time they'd say yeah and and the key thing was that the driver was polite and and didn't um didn't give the the traffic officer or police officer or state trooper a hard time which is a funny concept of justice that if you're nice to the police officer you can get a lesser charge if if you think about the hypothetical or the theory of it why would you get a lesser charge for being nice or for being impolite wouldn't the charge need to just stand on its own but that's where we are these days with the law so anyway uh, that happened don't do that call the court it was completely inappropriate for the surgeon to show up to court in that situation in the surgical theater he could have had the assistant call ahead of time he could have called ahead of time um, if he knew that there was any chance of those things overlapping then he should have called ahead of time if it if he's like in the middle of a, a, a two-hour surgery but now it's taking four hours and he had thought that he'd be out by now okay you would you you, you have somebody call when you know that you're that you're getting close to your court date and you're not going to make it so yeah let me know what you think of that one in the comments below. If we hear any follow-up from the Medical Board of California, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll make some kind of an update video. Thank you for watching. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and this is Lawful Masses, your favorite legal news and education channel here on YouTube. You can also find us on Floatplane and on twitch.tv slash lawfulmasses on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Our channel is community supported by your monthly financial contributions on patreon.com slash ljfrench, sponsus.com slash law, through YouTube memberships, and through Floatplane subscriptions. Thank you to the following $50 plus supporters in the month of February. Joe Tyson, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Kyle Mudrock, Evie, Spirit Bear, Andy, Benjamin Hytoff, Ugly Grill, Shiloh T, Rudolph Bescherer Jr., Oscar the Prophet, Brandon Abel, Torpedon, Sovereign Titison, Shadow Tycho, Earthbound Star, RDH Dragon, Nathan McCarty, and Winter Grill. And thank you as well to the $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on your screen. I hope everyone has a great week. I will see you in the videos that drop. I love you all. Bye.